I am Dr. M. Saladurai, Assistant Professor, Department of Chemistry, Nalamuthu Kaundar Mahalingam College, Pollach. Today I am going to discuss about the water technology. In the water technology, we have so many titles. Out of those titles, I am going to discuss only a few titles. Like the hardness of water and types of hardness. In the types of hardness, we have temporary hardness, permanent hardness. And we have some techniques. We have various techniques in terms of external treatment and internal treatment techniques. But mainly, I, I, I have to look at only the external treatment. In the external treatment, I am going to discuss only two titles, geolite process or permeate process. And second thing is ion exchange resin or demineralization process. Now we need to discuss one by one. First, what is the hardness of water? The hardness of water which is nothing but it does not form leather with soap is called hard water. The hardness usually expressed in terms of calcium and magnesium salt which is nothing but bicarbonates, chlorides and sulfates etc. First we need to discuss the formation of hard water. How we are going to confirm whether it could be a hard water. When the hard water reacts with soap, in terms of, we are going to use the sodium salt of stearic acid or palmitic acid. Gives it a curdy precipitate in, in terms of slurry precipitate. And we have some reactions. In the reactions, the hard water react with sodium salt of stearic acid to form the calcium stearate. In second thing, we are going to expect the magnesium stearate, which is insoluble in nature, so that we can easily separate from the without producing leather. Now we are going to discuss the types of hardness. We have two types of hardness, temporary hardness, permanent hardness. The temporary hardness is nothing but, it is caused by calcium and magnesium bicarbonates, or else, we should say it could be a bicarbonates of calcium and magnesium salts. This can be easily removed by boiling of water. What will happen when you boil the water? We can remove the in terms of bicarbonate is converted to insoluble carbonate salts. That, that we can expect it. Calcium bicarbonate, magnesium bicarbonate, and this calcium carbonate and magnesium carbonate, you can expect it. In the calcium carbonate, it's the insoluble uh, precipitate and also water and carbon dioxide. And these two, it will form as a precipitate and carbon dioxide is evaporated and finally you can get the purest form of water. And permanent hardness, we have some definition. It is nothing but the presence of chlorides and sulfates which is existed in the water. And this permanent hardness we cannot able to remove from the boiling of water. So that we will go on discussion the softening techniques like zeolite and ion exchange resin. And now we are going to discuss one by one zeolite techniques for water softening methods. That's what I already told you. I am going to look only the external treatment. We have internal treatment also. But out of the internal, it's very important for the external treatment. Now we are going to discuss one by one. Geolite process. First, we should know what is the meaning of geolite. The geolite is nothing but, it is the microporous, which is nothing but three-dimensional silicate structure. And have the hydrated aluminosilicates of sodium, potassium, calcium, etc. The main purpose for this geolite process we can use as a cation exchangers in the, from the hot water. For water softening process, we are going to use only hydrated aluminosilicates of sodium is used, which can reversely exchange its sodium ion with the cations present in the hot water. Simply, we would like to represent hydrated aluminosilicates of sodium. Normally, the zeolite can be written as a Na2ZE. Why? Because these two Na plus ions is replaced by calcium 2 plus or magnesium 2 plus ions in the 
hot water. So that's what we have some reactions. Now we are going to look the types of geolites. We have two types of geolites. Natural geolites and synthetic geolites. The natural geolites, it's a non-porous. But whereas in the cases of synthetic geolites, it's a porous. Because geolite process, the main condition, we want to have some porous, then only you can exchange the cations from the hot water. So that we'll go on discussion the synthetic geolites of the porous because it is having some capability to ion exchange from the hot water. Now we are going to now we are going to look at the process cation exchange resin uh, process, which means it is the schematic diagram of the geolite process. We have a one cylinder. In between, we have a one bed which is containing Na2Z. It's a sodium zeolite which is containing in the bed. And we pass the raw water in terms of it could be, we should say it could be a hot water which is containing the calcium and magnesium ions in the hot water. When you pass the hot water, what will happen? The cation, I mean bed which is going to be replaced the cations from the hot water and finally you can get the sodium replacement of the ions in the below sodium chloride sodium sulfate and finally you can get the soft water which is containing the sodium salt now we need to look at the geolite process in terms of it is the calcium and magnesium ions containing in the hot water when you pass the raw water and what will happen we pass the through the bed of sodium zeolite and the sodium zeolite in the sodium ions are replaced calcium and magnesium ions in the hot water and we have some reactions then finally we can get the regeneration why we need to go for regeneration see when you continuously pour the raw water the raw water which is containing calcium and magnesium which is going to be clogged on the bed and after that you cannot able to do I mean go for further reaction once if you regenerated in terms of see exhausted zeolite can be regenerated by using some brain water which is nothing but 10 percentage of sodium chloride solution and what will happen and these zeolites regenerated easily now it's ready to go for reuse in terms of GV calcium zeolite from the bed and we can regenerate by using the sodium chloride and what will happen and finally you can get the once again the sodium zeolite and converted this sodium zeolite go for in the further reactions now what are the advantages and disadvantages of zeolites we have an advantage removes hardness from the water in terms of how we are going to remove the 10 ppm hardness is produced the equipment used is compact occupying small space it requires less time for softening disadvantages it's a highly acidic water it is not suitable because it affects the minerals geolites of iron and manganese cannot be easily regenerated because and these two ions will make the cross linked in the geolite ion so that you cannot use these kind of geolites and raw material must be free from suspended impurities and finally the water should not be turbid you cannot go and use the turbid right and that is what we are going to look in the ion exchange resin the ion exchange resin is nothing but it's a demineralization process in which any salts from the hot water potassium chlorine magnesium and ions it may be a cations or anions we are removed all type of ions from the water to make it you suitable for home or industrial purpose and if you want to achieve the demineralization process or ion exchange resin and we need to go and discuss in the types of ion we have the exchange resin ion exchange resin two types of resin cation exchange resin anion exchange resins cation exchange resins containing acidic functional groups 
it is the capable of exchanging their H plus ions with other cations of the hot water. And this cation normally represented is the RH2. The examples we can use to cation exchange resin is nothing but sulfonated coals and sulfonated uh, polystyrenes. Here we have the anion exchange resin. What is the nature of work for anion exchange resins? Anion exchange resins containing basic functional groups which is really capable of exchanging their OH minus ions with other anions of the hot water. Normally the anion exchange resin is represented as a ROH twice. Examples cross-linked quaternary ammonium salts and urea formaldehyde resin. Now we are going to look at the process. See in right side we should look the have some schematic diagram of the demineralization process or ion exchange resin process. In left side cation exchange resin, anion exchange resin and we have acid regenerator in left side and right side the alkaline we can use the regenerated purpose and above we need to have some inlet in terms of we are going to pass the hot water and finally we can get the soft water in the form of outlet. Now we are going to look the process. First hot water passed through a cation exchange resin, cation exchange column which absorbs all the cations from the hot water in terms of calcium 2 plus, magnesium 2 plus, sodium ions, whatever it may be present in the hot water. And finally you can get the RCA or MG. When you pass the cation exchange bed and we pass the water to reach in the anion exchange resin, I mean cation exchange bed, the cation free water is passed through a anion exchange column which absorbs all the anions like chlorides, sulfates, whatever it may be from the hot water and what will happen it will convert it to RCL2 and finally get the water molecule in the form of purest form. See ultimately I would suggest I would suggest the water coming out of the anion exchanger completely free from cations and anions. That's what this water is known as a demineralized water or deionized water. And then once if you bed the exhausted, the cation exchange resin or anion exchange resin bed exhausted, so we will go on regeneration process. That's what we can discuss. The cation exchange resin is exhausted. It can be regenerated by, bossy, by passing a solutions of dilute hydrochloric acids or dilute sulfuric acid, which can be easily converted in the original form of the RH2. When the anion exchange resin is exhausted, it can be regenerated by passing a solution of dilute sodium hydroxide solution. And it can be easily converted to ROH twice. And we have some advantage and disadvantages. The process can be used to soften highly acidic and alkaline waters we can use in the demineralization process. And it produces water of very low hardness up to 2 ppm. The water softened by this is good for high pressure boiler, especially in the industrious purpose. Disadvantage, the equipment is costly and more expensive chemicals are needed. If water contains turbidity, then the output of the process is reduced. So finally, I will discuss about the water technology. These are all the title. It is very important. At least something we know, how can we remove the hardness from the water and get the purest form of water. Thank you.